Hello. As you can see from the title, today you are go our subject today is solving linear equations. We're going to solve both non-proportional and proportional equations. I want to warn you about something. I am going to show you very specific steps in how to solve an equation. You must follow those steps exactly and precisely. You must show me all of the steps all of the time. You cannot skip any steps. You must show me all of the steps in the right order. Otherwise, I will mark your paper wrong. I will give you a zero, and you must start over and do the entire thing again, even if you've only messed up on one of the questions. Why am I being so strict about this? Well, these equations that we're starting with are, by necessity, as you can imagine, very easy equations. You should be able to solve them fairly quickly and easily. However, very soon, you are going to be given much more complex equations. If you try to solve those complex equations in your head, skipping steps, you are going to mess up. You must learn how to show all of the steps on the easy equations so that when we get to complex equations, you will not be lost. So pay careful attention. I'm going to have this work all the time. Okay, let's go on. So remember, a linear equation has the form y equals mx plus b, where m is the unit rate and b is the start amount. So let's try an equation where it's like y equals 2x plus 5. So if it's y equals 2x plus 5, and this was, let's say, making dinners for the cafeteria, and that would mean that you would have 5 to start with, 5 dinners ready or ready to start, and then you could make 2 dinners every hour, let's say. So... This would be two dinners per hour. And you would have five at the start. So, using what we've done before, answering the types of questions, you could say, how many dinners after seven hours? And then you know that that would be y equals 2 times 7 plus 5. And that would be y equals 14 plus 5. That would be equals y equals 19, which means there would be 19 dinners after 7 hours. That's not the type of question we're answering today. Today's type of question might be something like, how long will it take to make... Oh, let's say 37 dinners. So now it's not x that we're changing. We're changing y. 37 equals 2x plus 5. Now, some of you might know how to find that answer, but the idea of today is you're going to learn the algebraic way of solving this equation. You're going to learn all the steps. All right, so we need some basic skills before we start. Okay, so let's say... And I have a box, and in that box I have some money. And over here I have another box, and I know that these two boxes have the same amount of money in it. I don't know how much money it is, but it's some money, and they are equal. Now let's say that I take some gold coins, and I put three gold coins on this side. What would I have to do? Are these still going to have the same amount of money? No. What would I have to do to the other side to make sure that they have the same amount of money again? I would have to add three gold coins. So that means that whatever you add to one side, add to one side, that means you have to add the same amount, same amount, Handwriting's bad, sorry. To the other side. Let's say 
that instead of adding, I start again with two boxes. They have the same amount of money in them, but instead this time, I multiply this one by three. And instead of having just one box, I have three boxes. What do I have to do over here? I have to add, I have to multiply this side by three also. So multiply by one side, multiply one side means that you must multiply by the same amount on the other side. Okay, so that's one very important thing. Those are two different properties. The first one is the equate equality property of addition, and the second one is the equality property of multiplication. But both of them add up to, what they both mean is, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other in order that they still be equal. All right, so let's try a quick little activity. I want you to think of a number. Don't make it too big, don't make it too small, make it a nice medium-sized number because you're gonna do some arithmetic to it. Come up with a number, all right? Now I want you to multiply that number by two. Okay, so do that. Think of your answer. Take that answer and add six to it. Okay? Now, I want to get back to your original number and I want you to try this two different ways, okay? First way, way number one. First step, one, divide your final answer, your final number, by two. Step two, subtract six. Did you get your original number? No, you didn't. Here. Let's try way two. Okay, you, do you remember your final answer? You took your original number, multiplied it by two, and add six to it. Okay, you have that number, that final answer, right? That final value? Step one, subtract six from that final answer. Okay, step two, divide what you got by two. Did you get your original number? Yes. So this way didn't work. This way works. First you had to subtract, then you had to divide. I will show you what I mean. So let's say that my original number was 20, okay? Now I'm going to multiply it by two so it becomes 40. Now I'm gonna add six to it and it becomes 46. Okay, I'll do way one. Way one first said I have to divide my final answer by two. So 46 divided by two is 23. Now I have to subtract six from it. So that is now 17. Is that my original number 20? No. That's why that way is the wrong way. Let's try way two. This, I'm telling you, it should work. So I'm going to take my answer, 46. I'm going to subtract 6 from it, and I'm down to 40. Now I'm going to divide by 2, and I get down to 20. Hey, look, I'm back to my original number. And that should work for you also. Okay? So... Two things to remember. One, whatever you add to one side, you have to add to the other side. Whatever you multiply one side by, you have to multiply the other side by also. And two, first step is to subtract, and the second step is to divide. All right, let's try an equation. Okay, let's see. Give me a number, give me a number, give me a number. Let's say, 
60. 60 is always a good number. 60 equals. All right, give me an M and a B. Well, how about 60 equals 5X plus mm, uh, 20. Okay, now, I happen to know the solution to this is X has to be 8. So, I'm going to skip a few lines, and I'm going to put 8 equals X. I'm going to leave that blank for right now. I'm going to demonstrate why I know that that's true. Well, I'll say 60 equals 5 times 8 plus 20. 60 equals 5 times 8 is 40 plus 20. 60 equals 40 plus 20 is 60. So I know that's right. But how did I go from here all the way down to here? Well, first step is to subtract. Second step is to divide. First thing, what is being added here? The variable is x. What are we adding? We are adding 20. So I have to subtract 20 from that side. But if I add to one side, I have to add the same amount to the other side, and the same goes to for subtracting. So if I subtract 20 from that side, I have to subtract 20 from that side also. And I underline. And then I put my equal sign. Now, see how my equal signs line up one above the other? That's a very good thing to do. That makes your solutions much easier to read. So... Let's do that subtraction. 60 minus 20 is 40. 20 minus 20 is 0, or nothing. 5x plus 0 is just 5x. Okay. So I've shown the steps. Next step. Well, first step was to subtract. Second step is to divide. But what do I have to divide by? Well, what multiplies x? What is sitting there? What's the coefficient? The coefficient is 5. So that means I have to divide by 5. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So since I multiplied by 1 fifth or divided by 5, I have to divide by 5 here. And what is 40 divided by 5? It is 8. Exactly right. 8 equals x. And then I demonstrated that it is correct. You must show all of these steps. You must show, subtract on both sides. You must show, divide on both sides. You must Write the solution. You must show the full check step. You must show all these steps. Do not skip any of them. Let's try one together. All right, so let's try to move this around a little bit. Let's say it's 3x minus 10 equals, oh, negative 25. All right. Anyone know the solution already? I didn't think so. I made it negative on purpose. I wanted to make sure you understand how to do it. Okay. What's the variable? The variable is x. What's happening to x? It's being multiplied by 3 and it's being subtracted by 10. I want to get it uh, down to only x. So, what do I do first? Do I get rid of the 10 first or do I get rid of the 3 first? Well, I get rid of the 10 first because you always first subtract or add, second divide or multiply. 
That's the way that gets you back to the right value. That's the order you should go. So that's the order we will go. So we're going to get rid of the minus 10 first. Minus 10 is a negative value. What gets rid of a negative 10 is positive 10. If I do that to the left side of the equal sign, what do I have to do to that to the right side? Add 10. Underline. Equal sign. These two cancel. I'm left with 3x. I don't like that. I'm going to clean it up. 3x equals negative 25 plus 10 is negative 15. It's not negative 35. You know better than that. Now, I did the adding. Now I have to multiply or divide. So, what's multiplying x is? 3. So I have to divide by 3. If I divide that side by 3, I have to divide this side by 3. I get x equals negative 5. Am I done? I know what x is. No, I must do the full check step. So, let's substitute. x is negative 5. So, I'm going to write 3 times negative 5 minus, not plus, minus 10 equals negative 25. 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Minus 10 equals negative 25. Negative 15 minus 10 is negative 25 equals negative 25. Are they equal? Yes. This is correct. Check step done. Let's try another one. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. How about 18 equals mm, negative 4x plus, oh, I don't know, 12? No, 14. No, 18. No, 26. 26. Oops, 26. So 18 equals negative 4x plus 26. The variable is x, the coefficient is negative 4. The add end is, is 26. So what do we get rid of first? The 18? No, it's not even the side where x is. x is on the right side of the equal sign. That's the side we're going to mess with. Negative 4x plus 26. Do we get rid of the negative 4 first that multiplies or the 26 that adds? Well, you always get rid of the adding first. See? It says so right there. Get rid of the adding first. So what gets rid of plus 26? Minus 26. If I do that to that side, what do I have to do to the other side? I have to subtract 26. Is this the other side? No, and you can't even do negative 4x minus 26. They're not even like terms. So we have to do it to the other side, negative 26. Underline, equal sign. Do I put it there or do I put it over here? No, I don't put it over there. It's not lined up. I put it here. So. 18 minus 26 is negative 8 equals negative 4x. Why isn't it plus anything? Because these two have made 0. It's gone. Now I have to divide because it's being multiplied. What's multiplying it? Negative 4. So what divides? Negative 4. Equal sign. Negative 8 divided by negative 4. Negative divided by negative is positive. 2 equals x. Am I done? No. I have to do the check step. So 18 equals negative 4 times 2 plus 26. Notice the only thing I changed from up here is the x turned into 2. All right. So 18 equals negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 26. 18 equals Negative 8 plus 26. 26 is a lot bigger than 8. This is going to end up being positive. Positive how much? Positive 18. They are equal. That's the correct thing. Notice all the steps are shown. Okay? Two more. All right. Let's say I have 
32 equals negative 8x. <gasps> There's no addition. This one is proportional. So, first step, add. Well, what's adding? Nothing's adding, so I don't have to add. There's nothing there. What's multiplying? Negative 8. So what do I have to divide by? Negative 8. By the way, I prefer using the fraction bar than putting the division symbol. Division symbol's baby stuff. Don't do it anymore. 32 divided by negative 8 is negative 4. Those two cancel, leaving x. Hey, let's see if that's right. 32 equals negative 8 times negative 4. Uh, 32 equals negative times negative is positive. 8 times 4 is 32. Hey, it worked. Solved it, even though there was no addition to it. Let's try another one. Negative 27 equals x plus 40. All right, where's x? Left side or right side of the equal sign? It's on the right side. What's multiplying it? Nothing. Well, actually, 1 is multiplying it, but multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, so it's okay to say that nothing's multiplying it. Not 0, obviously. 0 would make it disappear altogether. What's adding to it? 40. So let's get rid of that. Subtract 40. So where do I put the minus 40? There? No, that doesn't even make any sense. Why would you put it there? No, over here. That's where you put it. Minus 40. And negative 27, negative 40 is negative 67. They're both negative. Makes it a lot more negative. Equals x. What do I have to divide by? Nothing. Why nothing? Because nothing's multiplying it. I look, I, it looks like I have the solution right now. Let's put it in. So negative 27 equals negative 67 plus 40. Negative 27 equals, well, negative 67 is more negative than, than positive 40 is positive. How much bigger is it? It's 27 bigger, negative 27. Hey, look, it's the correct solution. So that's the solution. This checked it. You don't even have to see if you're right or not. You don't have to ask me. Your check step will tell you if you're correct. If it doesn't come out equal, you've made a mistake, and you have to go back to the beginning and try again. That's how to solve linear equations. Make sure you show all these steps. Make sure you show all these steps. Okay? Very good.